Good day, everyone. And once again, we are looking at that November 2022 exam. So if you haven't subscribed, please just make sure you're part of the family. Right. And we'll jump into it. We're looking at the trigonometry graphs. OK, so they say in the figure below, in the diagram below, the graphs uh, of f of x is 10 of x is and g of x is uh, 2 sine 2x. Two OK, they are drawn between the interval x element of minus 180 to 180. And they're giving us the value there, which is a. The coordinates of a are 60 and k and b are two points of intersections of f and g. Right, let's try and answer the questions as they follow, as we explain them. Right, so they say to you, write down the period of G. Now, remember, ladies and gents, when we, whenever we take the period, right, we will look at what we call the frequency there, right? So the period should always be the frequency divided by uh, the, I mean, the it, it should be 360 divided by the frequency, Right, so that's our period in this case uh, will simply be 360, right? And we are going to divide that by the frequency and that gives us 180, right? So that's our period. Okay, so 6.2, okay, I see we've got 6.2.1. They say to us calculate the values of K right now note that k is the point right where both graphs are actually 60 degrees so you can actually substitute 60 on either graph so i am going to actually say f of 60 which is 10 of 60 right and you'll notice that uh, once you put 10 of 60 that will simply give us a uh, root 3 right all right, so that is how we will get that. Or you can use special angles as well. They didn't necessarily prohibit us from using a calculator in this case. Right. Um, they say find the coordinates of B, right? Now, what I did uh, when I looked at this question uh, was just to realize that when you look at B, it looks like a reflection if in a sense you know it's a repetition of what happened from zero right uh, look at that so from negative 180 it's kind of a repetition and look at this they intersected when x was 60 degrees right so in this case it means i need to move 60 degrees towards the right again uh, that's where they intersected so uh, i would say the coordinates of b will be negative 180 plus 60, right? So in that case, that would be negative one, uh, uh, 120, right? As well as, well, it's on the same uh, y value, so that would be a root of three, right? So those would be the coordinates of B. Okay, so let's write them out, 6.2.2. Uh, so B has to have the coordinates negative 120 as well as root 3. Right. Um, so they say to us, write down the range of 2GX. Now, already GX has got the amplitude of 2, right? So in this case, it means that G exists between negative 2 and 2. But now... Uh, if we double that, obviously that will be between uh, negative four and four. So in this case, we're going to look at 6.3, right? So that means that Y would be an element of negative four uh, to four, which is twice of G, right? Uh, so as a result, that's negative four and four. Right, the next question as we move along very swiftly, Right, they say for which values of x? I know you guys uh, kind of do not like these kind of questions. For which values of x will g of x plus 5 minus f of x uh, plus 5, okay, be less than or, or equal to 0, right? Uh, in the interval minus 90 and 0. Now, please, I want you to listen carefully. So if you look at this, 
you can also actually write it down as g of x plus 5, right, less than f of x plus 5. So what are we actually looking at? Where the graph of g is below the graph of f, right? Let's just take the original graph, okay? And uh, let's not shift it as yet. Where is the graph of g, right? less than or below the graph of f, right? Between negative 90 and 0. So you'll see in this case the graph of uh, g, um, which is this one here, okay, which is this graph over here, right? That's below the graph of f over this period here, okay? Right. So in this case, uh, what would be that value? I believe it would be minus or negative 60, right? You can see that it's a sort of a mirror reflection there, right? So that would be negative 60, right? All the way up until zero, right? That's where the graph of G is below the graph of F. But now they said graph of uh, uh, G into X plus five. So what are they doing? They are shifting the graph by five units to the left. So instead of negative 60, it would now be at negative 65. And instead of zero, it would be at negative five. Okay. So remember, x plus five just simply means we're shifting to the left. Okay. So uh, in this case, they said for which values of x, it will be for values of x uh, is an element, right, between negative 65 all the way till negative 5 and I'm going to include both values uh, in this case because they said less than or equal to right so uh, we include those values nothing wrong if you decided to say less than uh, negative 5 and greater than negative 65 okay right that's for that interval there right 6.5 I hope that makes sense to you ladies and gents they said to us, uh, determine the values of P for which sine of X, uh, cos of X is equal to P, uh, which have exactly uh, two real roots in the interval minus 180 to 180. Now, I want you to please note in this case, what does this look like in our graph? Of course, they're not going to just ask us a random question, right? It has to be related uh, to the graphs that we have, right? Now, you'll agree with me, this looks like the graph of G, isn't it? Because think about it, when you expand that double angle formula, you will get 2 sine x cos x, right? So now, what we're going to do, let's try and write that out as uh, the graph of G, right? So you've got cos x sine x equal to P, right? But... To write it as, um, you know, the, the graph of uh, G, remember that the graph of G is 2x uh, 2 times uh, 2 cos x sine x, right? So what did I do? What's the difference there? Right, that 2 times 2. So in this case, it means that it's the graph of G um, you know, uh, the, the graph of G, you multiply that by 4, right? So that would be 4P, okay? So I've taken what we had there and made it into the graph of G, and the graph of G is 2 times sine of 2X, and sine of 2X is 2 times uh, cos of X sine of X, right? So in this case, what is the difference? Is that uh, we've now, we now have that 2 times 2, Okay, and I did the same uh, on the right hand side, so that's for P, right? Now, I want you to think about it, okay? So, we are looking for uh, when it will have two uh, um, real roots. So, in this case, um, we want it to be within, uh, um, you know, uh, their the amplitudes. And what is the amplitude in this case? It would be uh, at negative 2 and 2, right? So the graph, for it to have real roots, it must be between uh, 2 and negative 2, right? So in this case, this graph here, 
right? This one over here must be between uh, plus or minus 2. So it means that 4p must be also between plus or minus 2. So the value of p, right, we can divide both sides by 4, and p must actually be uh, plus or minus 1 over 2. Okay, right, I hope that makes sense, ladies and gents. Uh, and essentially, that's how the cookie crumbles when it comes to this uh, question on trig graphs. I hope that it makes sense. Uh, we'll try out some more a little later on. For now, goodbye.